A patch for Final Fantasy VII Remake was recently released, version 1.01. Uh, this is the first patch released by the developer since the game was launched in April 10th. Like most people who played Final Fantasy VII Remake, I was expecting a day one patch to address some of the texture loading issues. I personally found it very strange how great the character models looked and certain sections of the game looked. Yet in other sections of the game, those very same detailed character models felt like they were being dropped into a PS2 game. Unfortunately, this patch 1.01 doesn't fix those issues, but what it does fix, however, is strangely ambiguous, worded as fixes various bugs. So I thought I'd make this video to shed some light on, first off, why these texture issues were likely never fixed. Secondly, what exactly those various bug fixes referred to in this patch could possibly mean, because that could give us an idea on how Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 may end up playing on the PS5. I loved Final Fantasy VII Remake. I bought a PS4 just for this game alone. I platinumed the game, and I've deliberately stayed away from it since then so I can forget everything about it and hopefully replay it on the PS5 with enhanced graphics and frame rates. But as the 1.0 version of the game stands now, unless Square releases a more sweeping patch targeting these very specific issues, playing 7 Remake Part 1 on the PS5 won't automatically fix those issues. So firstly regarding the frame rate, the PS4 version of Final Fantasy 7 Remake is locked at 30 frames per second. Secondly, the low resolution texture issue and the draw distance popping issue we saw in the game have been confirmed by Richard Ledbetter of Digital Foundry to be hard baked into the game's code, which is why the issue actually doesn't improve even if you play the game on a super fast SSD and on the PS4 Pro like Richard did. So that fixed NPC draw distance is likely the result of a compromise that Square made to get Final Fantasy VII Remake released on the PS4, even though they originally intended for the game to be cross-generation playable on the PS5 because development was ultimately constrained to the PS4's archaic hardware. Texture popping is a phenomenon that occurs when the textures or the models aren't loaded in time or loaded correctly, and a low resolution image appears instead. But as I was playing this game, I also noticed that objects that initially appeared at low resolution still appeared that way even when I stood there for a while. And I didn't understand exactly why this was happening until I started looking into how Square most likely approached Remix development. So in modern Final Fantasy game development, Square utilizes two in-house game engines for their big mainline FF titles, Luminous Engine, which was originally Luminous Studios, uh, most recently used in Final Fantasy XV, and Crystal Tools, most recently used by Final Fantasy XIII. But with Remake, Square chose to leverage a third-party engine for the first time in a modern mainline Final Fantasy, and that game engine was Unreal Engine 4. In a pretty extensive interview, uh, Naoki Hamaguchi, who was Final Fantasy VII Remake's co-director, he explained why they chose to go with a modified version of the Unreal Engine 4 instead of one of their own in-house engines. I'll leave a link to the article in the description below. But the too long didn't read version of it is that Final Fantasy VII Remake chose to leverage the Unreal Engine 4 in order to streamline its development for an experience that the developers felt couldn't be achieved on the PS4 with its own in-house engines because Final Fantasy VII Remake's technical requirements simply require different tools. In Unreal Engine 4, certain post-processing effects like particles, hit sparks, bloom, ambient occlusion, these things can all be achieved at a relatively cheap cost. And according to Hamaguchi, leveraging Unreal Engine 4's renderer and customizing it in-house made a lot more sense over building an engine from scratch which is incredibly expensive and difficult, or even using an engine like Lumina Studios, which was what plagued a lot of the frame drops and the performance issues in Final Fantasy XV. So then, despite all this, despite using a third-party engine that other game developers also use, why does this bug even exist? And first off, while it has been confirmed that this issue is due to a bug in Unreal Engine 4, it isn't yet clear if the bug is inherent to Unreal Engine, or if it's from Square's modification of it. So I'm certainly not taking the onus off of Square. Regardless of how the problem came about, it is absolutely their problem to fix. So a Twitter user by the name of NecroAlex 
confirmed that Final Fantasy VII Remake's game data does contain high-resolution assets, and for reasons related to Unreal Engine 4, certain high-resolution textures were never loaded. According to Necro Alex, who modifies games that utilize the Unreal Engine, and a veteran user of Unreal Engine, Jeremy Gride, the most common reason that textures don't load at their proper resolution is due to a misstep in how the game handles LODs, or level detail. With respect to load times, textures and 3D meshes usually have multiple LOD versions included in the original file, and which version the game loads mainly depends on its draw distance relative to the camera's position. For example, Tifa's bar may have a low resolution version that's loaded when the camera is far away, and a high resolution version that's loaded when the camera is up close. What likely happened in Final Fantasy VII Remake, according to Jeremy, is that the developers weren't able to hit certain targeted frame rates. So for performance reasons, they overrode the original models with low level LOD meshes, or HLODs, in order to reduce the load times. The original high resolution assets, even though they weren't used, were likely left in the game's data because, at least according to him, the source textures and meshes still exist within the project itself, just that someone manually overrode them with HLODs. So you never get to see the high resolution version. On smaller games, you can adjust these issues by hand, but in a game as large as Final Fantasy VII Remake, the sweeping adjustments would need to be made across the board, hence the wonky texture issues that we see in the game. So ultimately in the end, what does this mean for us as far as getting these issues fixed? Unfortunately, what it means is that unlike the other PS4 titles which will receive an automatic performance boost via the PS5's boost mode, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 won't be receiving that same performance boost without a sweeping fix at the code level. This is a bit concerning since it's presumed at this point that Creative Business Unit 1, which is the unit responsible for developing Final Fantasy VII Remake, is devoting the lion's share of its resources to working on part 2, rather than fixing anything in part 1. But the programmer inside me suspects that, though the fixes required are sweeping, they may not be as time-consuming as it may seem. The draw distance for the NPCs is hard-coded, but depending on how they did code it, that issue could easily be just the result of a global setting, sort of similar to how you set the level of detail on a PC game to low, medium, high, Ultra, changing that setting on the PS5 version of the game to take advantage of the baseline SSD could be as simple as modifying an internal configuration file. Same goes for the maximum size of the available texture memory or the associated LOD priorities or the locked 30 frames per second. It could just be an internal configuration file that allocates a certain portion of available memory to the game. And changing it would essentially increase all the assets to their higher LOD and texture sizes, making the game instantly better and perform faster overall. As far as we know, the texture issues that are seen in 7 Remake are just the result of hard-coded global variables that can easily be changed on the PS5 but would likely remain unchanged on the PS4 versions of the game for baseline performance reasons. And that 1.01 patch, which appears to have fixed nothing on the PS4 version of the game, may in truth be a PS5 patch instead. And we won't be able to see the effects of that patch until we end up playing Final Fantasy VII Remake on the PS5. If I had to guess why this patch wasn't released sooner, then my best guess would be that the developers had to first confirm what exactly they were working with as far as the PS5's baseline hardware, since this game was developed long before the PS5 even existed. And then what Square did was that they prudently waited a little less than a month before the PS5's launch to release this patch. I think that's the most optimistic scenario right now for Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 as far as fixing those issues is concerned. But if it turns out that this patch really is just a fix for some save data issues that a few people were having, I hope that a PS5 specific patch eventually does get released, because I've been really anxious to replaying this game from scratch. I've wiped the story and characters from my memory as far as I could, and I want Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 to feel like a completely new game on the PS5. That to me, combined with Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2 and Final Fantasy XVI, would be the ideal experience for me going into the next generation.